Wanderlust. A strong desire or urge to wander or travel and explore the world. Morning, day two. I slept pretty good. Had some issues with my neighbors over there at like 11 o'clock. Just, I think they were just partying. But they eventually quieted down. I only heard them once. And then I was woken up at three. My watch was alarming for a storm inbound. I guess the pressure's dropped and the barometer started yelling that there was gonna be a storm. And it's not rain. It might have sprinkled a little bit, but uh, it's not raining currently. So I've already got my pack and everything out. Lagatha's eaten, got her some water. I'm cooking breakfast. We're gonna have some Red Bull. Mountain House biscuit and gravy. And uh, a good cup of hot coffee. And then I'm gonna pack the rest of this stuff up and uh gonna head out of here got a pretty long day ahead of us we're gonna head the best i can see from last night in the dark is it's gonna we came out of the woods over there on the other side of the bridge and i seen a blaze on this side of the road in the light so we're either gonna follow the road up a ways and then cut over or we're gonna go straight up over that hill over there and then drop back down on the other side into the hawassi river I wanna say it's the Hiawassee River Basin. I know it's the Hiawassee River for sure, but uh, we'll follow that Hiawassee River for quite a few miles today. The original plan was to camp somewhere along the Hiawassee River at the John Muir and Childers Creek intersection, but I'm not really sure what I wanna do I haven't thought about it a lot um, since I made up the extra miles yesterday. I made up five extra miles that I wasn't planning on doing. I can have I could I could keep an easy day and hike the six or whatever miles to Childers Creek and then camp, which may end up happening if it starts raining real bad. I'll just set up camp and hang out in the tent, or I could just deal with it and hike another 10 or 12 today and make up another four or five miles and that would give me a whole extra day worth of hiking i would have to look at the book and see where i could be picked up at past buck bald because that was going to be my original pickup location but uh yeah, we'll see. This is a camp set up. Uh, there's another campsite just right there, but it, nobody's in it. Hung up some clothes last night. I took them down, I put them back up this morning. Just my socks I was wearing yesterday, my gaiters. Trying to let them dry. And then of course the bandana that I used to clean my stuff with last night. Um, this driveway when I walked in last night is super muddy. I'm guessing that's why nobody parked here. But what's cool is there's some trash cans in a preview over there, so I'll probably hit those before I leave. Throw away all my trash. And then you see Lagatha over there walking through the woods. Uh, Big Lost Creek is just about probably 30 yards behind the tent right there. And uh, it's actually a lot bigger than what I remember seeing when I came here in the truck. But I also didn't get out when I was here in the truck. We just drove around the little circle. So, get breakfast cooked, get everything packed up, got to purify some more water, and then throw some trash away, use the bathroom, and we'll be on our way. Looks like we're on par for another probably 9.30, 10 o'clock hike time. It's eight now, I've been up since about seven. Just kind of laying in the tent. So, we may be walking a little sooner than 10, but that's what I'm gonna shoot for anyways is 10. 
stay tuned. I've been kind of multitasking since it started sprinkling a little bit, but it only lasted for a second. But uh, I've hiked a lot of miles. I've ate a lot of different breakfasts, but I must say this uh, mountain house biscuits and gravy is probably one of the best breakfasts I've ever had in the woods while hiking. I mean, it's, I don't think I let my water boil quite enough. I mean, it was bubbling, but it wasn't like a roaring, a roaring bowl. So there's still like a couple pieces in the top that were kind of crunchy, but I mean, it didn't taste any different. And uh, I mean, it tastes like sausage and gravy and biscuits. It's pretty awesome. So I've been on the move. I got a camp broke down, tents gone, almost got the bag packed, just a few small things. I'm letting my phone charge. Let the GoPro batteries charge last night. And I've still got to go purify water and throw trash away, but that's easy stuff. I'm just trying to get down another bottle of water. I was a little bit dehydrated when I got into camp last night, so I made myself drink two bottles of water before I went to bed. And my pee was still a little bit yellow this evening, I mean, this morning when I got up. And I drank a Red Bull a little bit ago, so that's not gonna help. But uh, I'm gonna put down this bottle of water. I may, try to down, I may try to squeeze down another one before we roll out of here. We're a little ahead of schedule. It's 10 minutes after nine. So I've got a little bit of time to play with. Like I said, I wanna be walking by 10. Now I've got plenty of time to do that. So there was a group that was camped directly across from me. I seen them last night when I came in, they had like a little small lantern. I started noticing this morning that they didn't have uh, a car or anything over there and that there was some hiking packs. So my plan was is to finish packing up and then walk over and kind of talk to them a little bit, but they ended up getting done before I did, but they, they actually weren't hiking, they were on bicycles. So I guess they biked in to here last night and then they were going down the road a little bit ago. But another good sign is if you look up here in the tops of the trees, the sky is uh, actually fairly blue, only a couple small white clouds. And then back over here, you got some clouds moving in, but the sun is right over there. So that's kind of, that's kind of hopeful for at least this morning anyways. Hopefully, whatever is gonna go down with uh, the rain and wind we're supposed to get will hold off a little bit. The wind's been blowing all morning. You can see it now. Trees are moving pretty good. But it's not like been a constant wind, just a few small gusts here and there. Although this is probably the strongest one we've had. Also today, I'm not gonna be tracking my hike with my watch. I did it yesterday. I think I said the stats in last night's video or yesterday's video, but I'm just gonna say the stats again. It was like uh, almost, uh, it's like eight hours and 45 minutes of hiking, uh, like 14.3 or 14.6 miles. Lagatha, lags, come on girl and uh, like 2,475 total uh, feet elevation gain throughout the whole day yesterday. So it was a pretty solid day for someone who doesn't, or someone who hasn't hiked long distance, multi days in probably three or four years. I've done plenty of day hikes. I just haven't gotten on the trail for an overnighter along over like two multiple day hikes in uh, quite a while so i was feeling pretty good about that i'm feeling pretty good this morning took some bayer to try to ease up the soreness in my legs trying to hydrate had a solid breakfast and uh so anyways back to the watch i went off on a little 
tangent there uh the watch um it's great it's got a super long battery life 21 days and i plan on doing a full review on it at some point i'm still trying to learn it still trying to figure out all the things that it does but uh it tracked my whole hike yesterday and did great but the problem is if you do it in a gps mode like that while you're tracking the battery doesn't last so i started i pulled it off the charge yesterday morning when i was leaving with 21 days and then in gps mode it was down to like 21 hours last night so i turned it off gps mode and it's back down to like 18 days so that's pretty good we just won't run it we just won't run it today but what i'll do is i'll look at my guidebook i'm gonna keep it in my pocket today i'll look at my guidebook i don't think it's very far to the hiawassee river um a couple miles maybe two miles three miles so i should be able to make pretty good time there and then it's pretty flat walking all through that area there's a pretty solid climb on the back side down by the island but i don't think i'm gonna be i don't think i'm gonna have to climb up that side i think i'll be going down it but uh, I'll just I'll just keep my guidebook and I'll try to reference points on my map and my guidebook instead of using my watch. Now there is a expedition mode on my watch that tracks multi-day excursions, and it's a battery saver option. And I don't know much about it yet, so I've got to go do some research and figure out how to use it and how good it works, and then maybe on my next multi-day trip which i'm planning to do pretty quick um i can use the expedition mode and then once i get all that figured out i'll do a whole review on it like around after i've had the whole watch for like four or five months but so far it's been great uh, i actually enjoy it more than my apple watch my apple watch couldn't even tell me half of the shit that this one does and without having service this one just does it automatically but uh I'm going to finish drinking this water, purify some more water, finish packing this bag the rest of the way up, and then make my way over to the trash cans, and then we'll be on our way. Alright, so I'm finally ready to start rolling out of here. If the audio sounds different, that's because I went ahead and took the media mod off, just to be precautionary for when it rains, and I put the regular gopro door back on it so it, it makes the camera all waterproof again that's the only downfall with that media mod the audio is a lot better you have the attachment points for external mics and lights and all that good stuff but they're just the camera is no longer waterproof so i went ahead and uh put the regular door back on it so now it's waterproof went ahead and took all my other clothes off and put my rain gear on put my quick dry pants on I've got my waterproof boots on. Um, I went ahead and put my rain fly on my bag. The last time I used the, this rain, particular rain fly on this bag, it fit, but I didn't have nowhere near the stuff packed in it that I do now. So it is kind of small, but it covers the bulk part of the pack. So um, I repacked my bag differently i moved the sleeping bag and stuff up top and put my my spare clothes and stuff in the bottom so in the event that <clears throat> the bag gets soaking wet at least the uh sleeping bag and stuff will be protected i can still get a warm night sleep i've also got the sleeping bag covered in a trash bag so it's got double protection some of the clothes down in the bottom are like under and around other things so they should be fine too i'm not real concerned with it um it should be okay but i think i'm finally ready to start walking it's been uh it's 9 45 now by the time i make it over to drop the trash and then get back up on the road it'll be it'll be uh pushing 10 o'clock Oh, something else I also did. I, I'm not I'm not gonna wear the chesty today, the chest harness for the GoPro. It just seemed like yesterday it was a real pain in the ass. So um, today I'm just gonna use my clamp and my gorilla stick. And when I'm not using the GoPro, I can just reach up and clamp it on the bar on the pack, and it stays out of the way. 
and then I can just reach up and clamp it off to reuse it. That's eventually what I what I had got to doing to yesterday anyway, is I just pull the camera up and use it because mm -hmm. it seems like down here you're not getting a very good POV. Like it, it's better in my my point of view, it's better from you know further up top. But anyways, let's get this show on the road. Doing my part to keep the bears out, keep the campsites clean. Come on, lags. So, this is where those other people were camped. And it seemed like last night that they were forever away, but really they weren't. I thought they were on down. Seems like they had a, I guess one of them's battery was dead, so they kept calling more and more people in. Come on, lags. All right, we're on our way now. We're gonna walk the skirt back up to the road, back across the bridge, and back up to the last point where I seen the white blaze last night with my headlamp. And I'm assuming we're gonna, we're probably not gonna walk up the road too far because according to the guidebook, um, we're gonna parallel Big Lost Creek for a while and then it actually even comes down to the creek maybe um, for uh, there's a nice campsite there apparently and then I don't know if we're going to get to it today which was kind of and this is one of the only reasons that I was nervous about uh, the rain coming in there's a Ford I've got to cross at some point, either today or tomorrow, across the Hiawassee River, I think. And according to the guidebook, it can be super dangerous at high water, obviously. Most creek crossings are at high water. So, I think there is a bypass that's going to be something I'm going to have to consider as it gets closer to time. But right now... Everything's fine. So they're, I guess, getting ready to do a prescribed burn in this area. Or maybe already did at some point. Because I noticed some charred trees back up on the hill over here as I was walking through last night. It's kind of kind of creepy, actually. Middle of the pitch black, and then you just see like a black shadow figure. So here's looking downstream of a uh, little big little uh, here's looking downstream of big lost creek i was just right down there a while ago right in there somewhere purifying water my camp was right over there super clear water i bet there's some native fish up in there if you hike up into the woods not so big on this side but still clear you can see the bottom up under that lean over really nice really nice area actually this may be somewhere i consider coming back with the family all right looks like uh this is for southbound and northbound 3.8 miles is where we're headed that'll be um the hawassi river i'm thinking we might have a little bit of a paved road walk. I don't remember. John Mayer Trail, I think this is the southernmost trailhead. The area that I wanted to camp originally would be at the southern at the northernmost trailhead of the John Mayer Trail, which is uh like another four miles, so eight miles total. But the sun's out and it look it's a be beautiful morning so far, so depending on how this next stretch of trail is and what it's like once I get around the river um, will depend on if I decide to push for more miles today. I'm feeling pretty good this morning. I slept well last night. Probably one of the better sleeps I've had while in the woods. Um, 
and I'm actually kind of I'm in a much better mood knowing that I woke up and I'm gonna get some hiking in before the rain sets in that's a huge it's a huge booster right there and at the moment the skies are blue that don't mean anything but it's, it's a pretty big deal at the moment so I made it back down to uh, Big Lost Creek. This must be the camping area that the book mentions, that I mentioned a little bit earlier. It's a cool spot for sure. Wouldn't know how to deal with the hooligans drinking and partying all night, but it was a nice luxury to have the picnic table, so I stand by my decision still. Not this way. Come on. Pretty awesome how clear that water is. Just had to stop. For about 10 minutes. And change clothes. These other shorts I was wearing. I'm not sure why. Because I've never had an issue with them before. But they were starting to chafe me pretty bad. And I hadn't even gone but a mile, if that. So, put a stop to that real quick. Just stop and change. It's not ideal for these shorts to get wet, but if I get rained on and they get wet, then at least I'll still have a dry pair to wear at camp. Been walking for about, I don't know, 30 minutes or something this morning. Probably. Maybe right out a mile from where we left the camp, but I walked up on this view and man, I just, I love it. And there's a, I just seen a river otter or a beaver drop down below that. Good thing I had the damn camera going. That was cool. Maybe he's still up there when we get up there. Might've been a beaver, but don't look like it's too backed up. Oh, oh. He's up there playing. Come here, lags. Lagatha, come here. Oh, that's cool. I see him sitting there. Come on, legs. Trying to get her to not scare him off. Come up here, pup. Come on. I turned on the camera to show how cool of an area this was, but it's pretty awesome that there's like a little beaver or something hanging out right there. I don't know where he went. He went back in the water. I see him swimming. There's two of them. It might be beavers, actually. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get pictures of them. So this is another one of the cool things about walking some of these older woods. Especially once you get out of the state of Georgia and you get up here into like the backwoods of Tennessee. I don't know how well you can see it, but if a person was to just look at that walking by, they would just see river rock. But if you look closer, right there directly in front of me, that's an old wall. Someone at some point over the years, and it had to have been years ago, because if you look here on this side, the trees and roots and stuff are growing out of them. And the wall goes on down, so I'm guessing... If you were to cross the river there it's pretty flat over there they probably had an old homestead at some point come on lags probably had an old homestead at some point over there and it's just stuff like that you see when you're walking out here that unless you're just out here you're never going to get to see that i mean i can show it to you in this video but just being here in person and seeing it a different spirit and different experience all on its own just walked up on 
what could potentially be another awesome campsite. Looks like it's pretty smashed down and some little trails going down in there where people have probably put tents before. And just the fact that you parallel Moss Creek right here for so long and it's all flat and easy hiking. It's uh, motivating me to go ahead and get a season license for hunting and fishing in the state of Tennessee next year. I'd love to come out and just hike even just this section for a day, maybe two days and fish this creek all up and down through here. I know there's fish in there because uh, that little mink that I seen, it, it was definitely eating on a hand-sized fish. So if there's hand-sized fish in there, this must have used to be an old road. There's a pole there, uprooted pole there. So that just reinforces the idea of that homestead back there a little bit more but yeah anyways if there's hand sized fish in here that, that guy can live off of i'd say there's probably some natives on up in here and i'm not gonna say that it doesn't get fished a lot because after meeting that old hunter yesterday in the woods i say there's probably a handful of the older generation who do come down in here and fish it but i'd say it don't get fished as often as more accessible places this is really typical of these southeastern creeks just full of these giant boulders and we don't have very many like this back in Georgia one two that I can think of Jack's River and Conestoga River but most of them are nothing compared to this but this is just awesome good deep water right there be probably be an awesome swimming hole in the summer everything just channels right down through here sounds like a good fair amount of water moving right through there down that trough now i was looking naturally since i do kayak white water i was looking back upstream about if it'd be possible to run I think this down through here would have to be extremely high flood stage to be able to get through these narrow narrow slides and stuff down through here. Looks like we got a little ford here. By ford I mean the place where we gotta cross. It ain't nothing really pretty simple you can even walk right down here to where she's going and step across I bet this is a pretty awesome creek coming out of that valley I'm not sure what this one is but that was our first water crossing of the trip dry feet waterproof boots and gators never even fill it i've hiked a lot of miles on the at in the southeast and some of that even being through the smoky mountains i've hiked a lot of miles on regular trails in georgia and this will put me up at around 110 miles that I've hiked of this particular trail to BMT and I'm not sure that I found another trail 
that's as scenic as this specific area. Don't get me wrong, some of my favorite hiking is through the Smokies up over those peaks and balds where you can just see 360 degrees <clears throat> any way you look but there's just something about being right along this creek for miles that's just awesome and i'm not really sure how this is going to play out i'm thinking that this um walsh creek is probably going to run right into the hiawassee river and it would be awesome if we just paralleled it all the way to the river I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, it's like usual. We'll get right to the end and we'll like skirt up a mountain or something, which will be fine. But it'd be awesome if it followed it all the way. But either way, this is definitely on my list of sections to hike again. I would. And that's exactly what Hunter was t talking about, telling me to be safe before I came out here. Trees falling. That's pretty terrifying. Anyways, thankfully that fell on up the hill there. We just have to keep an eye out for sure on that crap as the wind picks up through the day. Um, but as I was saying, this will be one of them places where I'll definitely come back and hike this section. Probably with a Tennessee fishing license. Um, maybe even this same time next year. If we're still in Georgia then. And uh, I'd start at, I'd have somebody drop me at Lost Creek Campground and I'd start there not this way because from what i'm gathering this is going to be following the water the whole time and then we'll be on the hawassi river for a little while as well and i know there's fish in there so this could very easily be a three or four or five day fishing trip and i'm all for it